Guys, I finally have all of the pieces of equipment that I need to get this tank up and running. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. This is just going to be a putting it all into the tank kind of video. I will be releasing individual videos on all of the products for those of you who, uh, you know, want to see what you get in the box um, and how they all work. Um, so I will be releasing individual videos on all of those as well um, and how to put them together for newbies. I'm that kind of learner, like I don't want to read the instructions, I want to see someone else unpack it and put it together. So but yeah, I'll, I'll release those videos as well. Those of you who haven't seen, I did a video um, that sort of explains my sort of journey to this stage. I really feel like that should be the beginning video that you watch before any of this series. Um, it really explains, you know, how I got to this point and also explains that all of this is sponsored. So um, I think that's a really important video to go back and watch. I'll leave the link up here. Um, but yeah, it is all sponsored products. Um, and I would love to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to, um, to Anthony, Ravi and Graham for your support and sponsorship. Um, it means the absolute world. So um, yeah, absolutely blown away. So thank you. All right, so um, I have done videos already on how I did the rockscape and sort of molding that together. So if you're interested in any of that sort of stuff, that will be included in the playlist for this tank. So uh, already done that. And um, I did a video the other week on putting together the plumbing for the sump. I had some people ask me if the plumbing came with the water box if, or if I had to go and find that myself. Fire out Brussels sprout. If you had to go and find the plumbing, that'd be a bad time. That's not, yeah, no, it comes with all of that plumbing. So rest assured, oh my gosh, I would not buy a tank that I had to go and try and find the right size pipes. Like, I don't know, too complicated for me. So, so yeah, no, it comes with the pipes. So don't worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna mount my power boards that I just bought. So I got a smart power board because I want as much of this tank to be able to be controlled on my phone. So I've got that and I've also got a backup one that I might run my power head on um, just as a bit of a backup if the Wi-Fi goes off for whatever reason, um, I wanna have a bit of a backup. All right, so I've got some command stickers. So I'm gonna stick the power boards to the wall behind this pot plant, um, strategic placement of the pot plant to conceal the uh, power board. So I'm going to do that. Um, that way it's off the floor and it's not in the sump where it's humid. So they're stuck on. And the beauty about this is when that's in front of it, I can actually hide a lot of these cords in down the side here. Um, so, so I'll be able to have that looking nice and tidy. I'll have all the excess cords just tucked into the basket here. All right, so that's all pretty concealed. You won't be able to see much there, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so the first thing to go on my tank is my Tunes NanoStream Wave Maker. Um, and just bear in mind, I will be doing an unboxing video on all of these products um, separately. So uh, keep an eye out for those videos if you're interested in the particular product. But we'll go ahead and pop that into the tank now. All right, time to put in the water. I'm gonna put down a plate um, on the sand so it doesn't disturb all the sand while I am tipping in the water. All right, I feel like a bit of an excitable child today, like I've had 75 Red Bulls or something. But <laughs> I've popped in some water. I've only got about four of those buckets, so I've now got some more RODR going. Um, and yeah, so now I will go to the next thing to add into the tank and that is my uh, heater. So I've got the Eheim, e I think it was Eheim. We did clarify this in one of my previous videos how to actually pronounce it because I'm a Muppet and can't pronounce anything. But um, yeah, I'm, I apologize if I've just said it wrong again. But anyway, uh, this is the heater I've got. Uh, so let's go ahead and pop that into the tank. So make sure we set it to 25. Something I like about this heater is that it's not stickers. Heaters that I have on my six foot had stickers for the numbers and they came off after a while. So I like that, that they aren't stickers. So that'll be good. Next thing on the list is the return pump. So I'm going to be using the Octo return pump, uh, which fits really, really well with the Marine X. 60.2 so this is the one I'm going to be using. Let's go ahead and pop it in the tank.
Next to go in is my skimmer. So I'm gonna be using the Opto Classic 110S for this build. So let's get it unboxed and in the tank. All right, I'm finally at the part where this next bucket of water is gonna make the water overflow into my sump and start filling up the sump. Um, as a first time sumper myself, <laughs> this is a little bit of a daunting process. Um, you know, wanting to get it right. So yeah, I wanna show you that. I'm going to do my last bucket. I'm gonna open this up and hopefully you'll be able to see um, the water coming into the sump and the level that we want it there. So as you can see, the water is going up through here, down through the filter sock, out through the bottom, and it's filling up this chamber. Then it will eventually get to the point where it goes through this, which will fill up over here, go down under, and out through to the return pump section. So I'm trying to fill it up to the point where the return pump chamber is about in line with the sponge there. So I'll keep filling it up. All right, I reckon we turn on the pump now. All right, so that empty, I'll probably add a little bit more. So, over here, I just turned it down a little bit. All right, so there was a few bubbles coming out from this one. So I opened the valve a little bit more, which is that way. So I opened it the tiniest little bit, then looked to see. And also the emergency pipe. So now I've got the emergency pipe where it's not covered with water. So um, that's what you want, I've got it. So it's uncovered. So yeah, that was a little bit daunting, not gonna lie, um, filling up a sump for the first time. But I think we've found a happy medium. I, if I turn off the return pump, it doesn't overflow, so that's good. Could probably fill it up a little bit more, but once I get the skimmer up and running, I'll do a mark uh, on the sump for when I do water changes and stuff like that. But that is all good to go. So if the return pump turns off, we're not gonna overflow, so that's good. So we'll turn it back on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in some salt. Now I do have my wave maker and all of the pumps all going. So I'm actually just gonna be adding this directly into the display and then also into the return pump chamber um, in my sump where there's the, the most amount of flow in those sections. So you would not normally do this once you've got your fishing corals just because there's nothing in there um, I'm just adding it directly in there. Well, what a day. I have it set up completely and I have learned so much today like it's actually been such an interesting process setting up my very first sump. There's still a few bits and bobs that I need to pop in there, um, like my Kamoa dosing pump. I'm super excited to get that up and running, but I'm just simply running out of hours today. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to do an unboxing video and setting that up video, um, but that's for another day. I'm really looking forward to sharing you all those in-depth videos that I shot today. Um, I think I've done about 
four or five videos worth today. So I'm so excited to share this journey with this tank with you guys and show you a whole different way that you can reef keep because there's so many different ways. And hopefully for some of you who are thinking about getting into saltwater keeping, um, this can show you another way that, you know, might tickle your fancy a little bit more than your canister filter set up. Um, that, you know, there is a really easy, basic way that you can have a stunning tank that's really easy to maintain. So that is my whole goal in this, is to encourage other people to give it a crack themselves and show different ways that you can reef keep. So hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.